Hi, this is Martin Fisser, and I'm interviewing Jeff Tieper, Corporate Vice President of Microsoft 365 Collaboration. Today, we will we'll be discussing the latest developments of the Microsoft 365 Collaboration platform. Jeff, great that you were able to, uh, to free some time for us. Thank you, excited to be here, Martin. So my first question is um, the, the, the intelligent storage platform uh, and, and how it's powering SharePoint. Could, could you explain a little bit about this intelligent platform and, and, and what does it do? Yeah, so our strategy is uh, what you uh, think of as SharePoint as a platform is going to power lots of experiences across Microsoft 365. So not just SharePoint, but uh, OneDrive, Teams, Lists, which we'll talk about. And the most recent set of announcements is uh, Teams meeting recordings and stream video. And what we've done is build that SharePoint platform on lower level services, so Azure, Blob, and SQL, uh, the graph for search and AI and compliance. And then uh, we use the Power Platform for workflow. But inside that intelligent SharePoint platform layer, we have uh, you know, end user creatable content. You don't have to be a developer to build on this database, if you will. Uh, so we have metadata, schema, versioning, uh, item level security, role based permissions, all the things you'd normally expect about of a content management system. But since we're really flexible, we can do files, uh, we can do dynamic websites, and we can now do video. And so we've been building uh, a set of technologies, and you know, one day we'll sort of describe them all in a row. But if you look at the last uh, year or so, we've added uh, classification, labeling, and protection. So the idea that you can put policies on content and containers and have labels on content and associated policies. And wouldn't you like to do that with videos as well? We have support heterogeneous co-authoring with hyper-fast performance. So we've been doing a lot of work at the file system and network level in SharePoint. Uh, one aspect of that was motivated by the Fluid framework where you see some things in preview, but next year will be a big year for Fluid. Uh, you'll be surprised by some things we do. Um, uh, but obviously at that level, we said, gosh, we're we're doing all, all this work at a storage level. Uh, you know, if we had all these features in stream and Teams meetings, you know, people would be able to share them. They'd be able to get all the security and compliance capabilities. And your stream portal would be built on SharePoint and the SharePoint framework. So you'd get all that customization for free. Uh, so I guess earlier in this, you know, about a year ago, maybe earlier this calendar year, we decided to uh, turn the team on on this, and we've been making a lot of great progress. In fact, internally, I'm already using Teams meeting recordings stored in my OneDrive. Uh, we're using that internally in Microsoft, and Stream's coming up pretty soon for internal dog food. So we're we're really excited about SharePoint being the intelligent content management platform for lots of applications. Yeah, because this this fluids framework, um, I remember. So we have this collaborative co-authoring for for a while, um, and, and and basically the the way that I'm explaining it to uh, to customers, for example, is is saying like, well, this is this this is the next step. The 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 ability also to to in real time uh, work um, in like like milliseconds on on, on files yeah. across the globe, which is amazing if you think about it uh, from a scale perspective. <laughs> um, yeah, what we're doing is a lot faster uh, than anything anybody's done before uh, because we did work across the protocol and the lowest level native storage in SharePoint. I think it's, uh, I don't know if it's last, uh, maybe over a year ago at the SharePoint conference, I talked about how the native storage system in SharePoint we re-architected to be the same data structures that we're using for Fluid over the wire. So we had as few data translations as possible. Uh, it supports heterogeneous co-authoring, so uh, people will be able to edit tables and Teams chats and so forth. Um, and then it's more of a platform. If you think about it, the way people have done co-authoring in the past, people roll their own on top of web sockets, but you really can't get the data you, you know, the data is not strongly typed mm -hmm. and defined a set of data structures in the fluid framework 
So you could build multiple apps on this same data and make it easier to integrate with it. Um, and so uh, really excited about it. And you know, again, it's sort of native to SharePoint. That does sound really, really cool. So I'm, I'm very curious what that will, uh, will continue to bring to the platform in the, in the future. Yeah. So uh, another big thing that be, that that has happened. So I've I've been working with SharePoint almost twenty years, and 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 lists has always become like this this key component in the platform. But over the last couple of years, um, of course, list became modern, and now with Microsoft lists, it's it's really going to uh, a, an all new level. Basically, could you explain a little bit about how we um, how 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 does Microsoft List became a separate app, and 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 what could Project Nucleus uh, will allow us to do in in, in that space? Yeah, uh, well, we've been listening to customers who tell us they want a lot of flexibility and modularity. You see that with files. We have files. You can get to. Of course, you can go to your SharePoint site and get all your files there. But if you just want to browse your files, it's just easier to do it in OneDrive or. Uh, if you want to get access to your files in Teams or Outlook, we've supported that as well. So it's got us very much in this Lego mindset of, of course, we need one underlying platform, but people want uh, to get access to you know, these things in, in different experiences. So about, about a year, year and a half ago, we really decided we wanted to surge on the investment in lists to take it to the next level. We've been making progress on the experience. Lots of people have been building power apps with LISC, but we really wanted to like raise our game. And we thought about it and said, you know, of course we should do this in SharePoint sites, but we also, people will want lists in Teams. They won't want to go from outside Teams to open up the browser in SharePoint. And so we need to have that in Teams. So we need this control or Lego block for um, lists. And then we said, you know, one, we, one thing we've learned in OneDrive, you know, we get a bit of, should I use OneDrive and SharePoint? But it's like, should you use file browsing or websites? Well, you should use them both. Uh, maybe not at the same time. And you, you, but so we, we, re, we heard that people wanted this, hey, I just want an app where I can get to all my lists, I can make new lists, and I can share them if I want to. And so we recognize this pattern is exactly what we saw with files, which is not everybody's going to go to all their lists in SharePoint or even all their lists in Teams. And we said, why don't we have a streamlined app in this category? There's a number of competitors in the end user database market. Uh, there always are. You know, if it's just a feature of SharePoint, it's hard to get the same level of mind share. Uh, and so we made a threefer, if you will the underlying SharePoint platform, but lists in SharePoint sites, lists in Teams, and a standalone app. And uh, I think the UX for that is really gorgeous and simple. And if you saw the mobile version we showed at Ignite, I think it's, uh, that's going to preview. Um, you're really proud of it. So again, it's this idea of unlocking the capabilities of SharePoint and putting it in multiple contexts is yeah. the overall strategy. So, and then with Project Nucleus, I, I understood uh, this will be bringing offline use cases to lists. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So we thought about this one. Uh, there's a pattern of how you build modern web apps called progressive web apps, where the web UI can sit on a local cache. You know, in the browser, it's called IndexedDB, uh, and use uh, service workers uh, to go talk to the cloud. But it doesn't work for you know, really sophisticated applications with lots of data where you want to have dot, lots of different views on the data. And so we are supporting progressive web apps, but we said, how could we go one better to be even faster, support more data? You know, every now, you know, people remind us all the time they have big lists. Uh, you know, we support, you know, people having hundreds of thousands of files in OneDrive sync. And we said, well, what if we use the same database technology, which is Effectively, we're using SQLite on the client as the metadata store for a OneDrive sync and just architect it in a way where our web apps uh, talk to that in a sort of offline first uh, cache model, where if you're connected, it plays back to this cloud, but if not, it, it works just great. And so we said, okay, that's uh, 
clearly we want to bring that to all apps, but you know, you got to crawl, walk, run in tech. And so we said, why don't we start with lists? Because that's a really interesting, you know, app where nobody's really done. Can I take a hundred thousand list app offline and, and work with it and create custom views and insert data and so forth? Um, so we're uh, we're really excited about that one. That was probably you could tell in the keynote I did uh, yeah. one of the so one my more favorite thing. things we yeah yeah. Um, so it'll come to lists first, but we will bring it other places, and you know it, it will be a one of the benefits. An end user won't not really care about these things. They'll just see this, this list app is amazingly fast with lots of data. Techie people who are trying to follow SharePoint will say, wow, those guys are doing stream video and fluid framework and classification labeling and protection and this offline nucleus thing. Wow, this is the most sophisticated end user storage system in the industry by far. And Yes, that's what we're trying that's, to get across. That's the feeling, yeah. I, mean, I totally agree. These, 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 these ingredients, they... Uh, they they provide a very very valuable platform to you also for for ISVs and to for, for developers probably yes. at some point to build on yeah. top of. Yeah, we'll we'll have to stage it like they'll you know first it'll be used for our list app but then we'll expose it to more apps once we've yeah. you know got V1 out and learned from that. Yeah. Yeah, but from yeah, from the platform perspective, I can really imagine how uh, yeah it, that that starts of course as a first um, uh, first party. Uh, thing for lists and then it could grow from there, which is, uh, yeah, very cool. So my last question um, is about uh, basically the, the the new workplace analytics for teams. Yeah. Could you share a bit about this new product and, and, and uh, your vision about how software could actually change uh, behavior of employees to be, uh, to, to improve well-being and, and productivity? Yeah, the timing of this is, you know, we've had workplace analytics, as you probably know, for, for a while, and it's been a good source of how companies gain insights about how different teams work. But it's gone from nice to have to essential because is in the COVID era period, uh, w there's in lots of people work remotely and there's remote teams and the pressures of that geographically distributed teams and so forth. And that that always existed, but what's happened with COVID is a lot more people appreciate the consequences of that. Are there, if I'm part of a global team or if I'm remote, are there any limits to the hours that I'm working? Uh, and then you know, compound it where you're at home and your your office is right. You know, I find in the morning I'm starting earlier, and that I have to force myself at the end of the day to have a hard stop. And it's just too easy after dinner to go downstairs and do some more. And, you know, sometimes you really need to do that. But most of the time, that's not really healthy and sustainable. And, you know, we've had to tell people to take vacations. You know, I've told the team, like, hey, I'm taking a vacation this week and not going to answer any email or be on Teams. Uh, so workplace analytics uh, brings that to the front in Teams where people are increasingly spending time and helps leaders see how their teams are doing and um, you know, do they need to structure work differently? Do they need to set expectations on meeting hours and responsiveness? Um, because if, you know, this is all not, to, you know, it's all pretty well intended, giving people the flexibility of when and where they work um, is a good thing, but if not, if you don't understand what's going on, then you're then everybody is working all the time because th anybody might ping them at any time. And so, um, you know, we're really excited to bring the capability to teams and help leaders have more effective, more sustainable teams. Yep, I, I fully imagine the, the the focus time scheduler that that we have as a from from the Cortana suggestions and and also the. Um, uh, the open questions from email that still need to be answered that they they help me on a daily basis uh, to to save some time to do work and to to get things done. Um, so I can imagine a lot of new um, innovation coming from this space to to actually uh, teach people the the right behavior. And it's funny that that how software could put, could play a role in that. Yeah, it's and it's, I think it's a responsibility on us at Microsoft is you know, we have these cloud-based tools that work cross-platform and on mobile, you know, it is making it easier for people to work anywhere 
um, with others. But that's not our goal to turn people into, you know, working 24 hours a day. Uh, it's to give some modicum of control back to people and where they want to work. And so we have, I think, a responsibility to give these tools to individuals and organizations so that uh, the, po the point of what we're doing is helping people be more productive, not driving them to burnout. And so we have a real responsibility to, to provide tools on that front. Great. I love it. So, well, thank you for this interview. Um, sure. Thank you, Martin. Again, uh, thanks for, for uh, taking some time. And, uh, well, um, hope to see you again in the near future. Yep. I'm looking forward to it. Take yeah. care. Stay safe. Have a great day.